Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Here are 10 underused features of 10 different Mac apps. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So most Mac users use a variety of different apps throughout the day. And these apps are packed full of features. Here are 10 features you could be overlooking in the apps that you use all the time. First let's start off in Safari. The most underused feature in Safari I think is Reader View. So you're looking at an article like this and there are ads and navigation elements and all sorts of things. If you want to focus on the content you can turn on Reader View either by clicking on this icon here or you could also go to View and you have Show and Hide Reader View here. Shift Command R is the keyboard shortcut. Now look at how nice this is to read. Not only can you focus on the actual content of the article but you have controls right here to increase or decrease the size, to change the background color, and the font. So next we've got the Messages app. A feature I love to use in the Messages app but many people don't is the tap back. So you get a message like this and you might respond OK or maybe a thumbs up emoji or something like that. But if you control click, right click, or two finger click on a trackpad you can select Tap Back and then you can select one of these. Watch what happens when I choose the thumbs up. Instead of a new message being sent a little thumbs up icon appears right here over the message and that's what the other person sees as well. So instead of cluttering up the conversation with little OKs and Sures and Yeses and Nos you can just use these little Tap Back icons. In Pages an often unused feature is Character Styles. Now a lot of people may know about Paragraph Styles. That's when you take an entire paragraph like this, you change something about it like a larger font size and then you can create a new style based on that or redefine the current style by updating and it updates all the rest of the text as well. Character Styles work the same way but they don't affect entire paragraphs. Just any characters you have selected. So if you select some text like this and say let's go and make that bold and underline and also change the color to something else like that you can use that as a character style by clicking here, adding a character style, calling it whatever you want like that and then you can use it for other things as well. Just select it, go to Character Styles and choose it. The best part about it is you can then change it. Let's change it to a different color like this. And now when I go into Character Styles here I can update this character style with what's selected and notice what happens to the other times I've used it. They all update it as well. So imagine having a thousand different things set to that character style and being able to change the color or font or something else instantly for all 1000 items throughout your document. In the Reminders app an underused feature is indenting or sublists. So for instance I could add some items to this to-do list right here and they could be meant to be part of a single task like clean out work closet. So you could have some subtasks like this and I could take these four items here I'm going to click to select and then shift click to select all of them and then I'm going to drag them underneath this and then I'm going to go to Edit and Indent or use Command and the right square bracket. This will indent all of these under this one item which now gets bolded because it has a list of its own. Now watch what happens when I check the main item. It checks off all of the sub items as well. Now the Calendar app is extremely useful of course but what makes it so much more useful to me is sharing a calendar. So you can take a calendar like this one. I'm going to click right here and then share it with other members of my family. And we can all add items to the same calendar and see what's on it. So instead of having to tell everybody about certain events happening you just put them on the calendar. Everybody even gets notifications about new events added and changes made. You can do the same thing with a work group, with a group of friends, softball team, however you want to use it. Now in the Contacts app there's also a very underused feature and that's not actually in the Contacts app. It's the ability to actually access all of the information you put in here in other places. So for instance here I am in the Mail app and I could add new people in the To or CC field by simply clicking the little plus button here and it brings up a little mini version of the Contacts app and I can select 
someone here. It will list their email addresses and I can easily add them there. The same thing in Messages. I can go New Message and then click right here and there's that little mini version of the Contacts app again. Knowing that you've got such easy access to your contacts gives you incentive to actually go through your contacts, clean them up, make sure all the important people that you need to be in touch with through different apps are listed there and you can easily find them. Now I've got to include the Finder here as well. The Finder of course gives you a window that allows you to manage your files and folders. But all too often I see people going and creating multiple Finder windows like this and then maybe use them to drag and drop files back and forth or just look at one location in one window, one location in another window. But what I like to use instead is Tabs. You can create a new tab in an existing Finder window with Command T like that and then you can have two different locations right here easily accessible. You could also go to Window and then Merge All Windows or in a window with only one tab like that you can actually enable tabs by using Show Tab Bar like that. And now you've got the tab bar here. I can actually drag the tab from one window to another. So I like to use the Finder like this and if you think that makes dragging and dropping from one location to another hard it doesn't really. You can grab a file like this, drag to the tab, wait, the tab opens and you can drop it in there. An underused feature of the Maps app is Look Around. Now for years Google has had Street View in Google Maps. But Apple Maps didn't have that originally. So even today a lot of people don't realize it's there. It's mostly in cities and it's not everywhere yet but it's in more and more places every year. So to use it I'm going to click and hold here until this pin appears and then you can see here I've got this little look around window. You can see the little binoculars there. Click there and then you go into it and you can move around like that. You can click on the ground to move forward. It's great for really getting the lay of the land before you head to a location. You can click here to shrink it and actually have it in a little window. And then you see the binoculars here and you can actually drag the map around and go to a new location like that. Preview is a great app that does a whole variety of different things with images and PDFs. One underused feature is the ability to quickly copy and paste to create a new PDF that just has the information you want. So say you got a newsletter like this and you just want to clip out a portion of it. You could go to the markup tools by clicking here, use the selection tool, select an area like this and then a quick copy, Command C and then File, New from Clipboard. And now you have a new PDF that just has that one little thing you need. So you don't have to save some huge PDF just for one tiny little article or maybe if you get a multi-page PDF that has a ticket on it and you just want the little spot that actually has the ticket not the ads and other information. You can create your own PDF like this. After you create it just save it and it will be this separate file. And finally we've got the Dictionary app which you may not use very often. It is handy for looking up the definitions of words. But what writers will use it for a lot more than that is the thesaurus. Click there and you get a full thesaurus. It's right there on your Mac. Plus you can just quickly click on something and it will jump to another entry. So you can jump around to find the exact right word for whatever it is you're writing. Let me know what you think are some underused features of your favorite Mac apps in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.